I discovered vMix when I was looking for a three-play alternative for a small-budget high school football production that we were doing. I needed a simple four-in kind of one-out replay system, and vMix replay fit that perfectly. The only thing at the time was there wasn't a physical surface that controlled vMix replay, so it was a little clunky controlling it with mouse and keyboard. I took a X keys jog and shuttle controller way back in the day and I kind of created a template that could be used with vMix Replay. It was very popular among vMix Replay ops and it eventually led to the design and creation of the X keys replay controller which incorporated the jog and shuttle wheel and the T-bar. So today we're going to go over all the features of the X keys replay controller and how they work inside of vMix. So when you open your X keys controller right out of the box, it's going to look like this. So this was the original version. Um, we've gone in since vMix 24 and we've added some keys, all right? Those keys now come with the new version of the controller. So when you purchase it, you'll have it configured like this and you'll have a little baggie with some extra keys. And this is what the extra key set kind of looks like on the controller. Basically, all we've done is we've added an A and B button and this A, B button right here. And we took out the uh, record stop because we now have a record start and stop. So if you look at this guy here, no A and B button, right? So you got to take this guy off, add your A and B button, and then add your A slash B button right there. And, boop, and you'll be good to go. That's it. So that's kind of the two ways that you can kind of configure it out of the box. Um, if you're new to vMix Replay, you can take this controller as is right out of the box and plug it into vMix. And vMix natively has a template that works with this setup. So you don't have to go in and create shortcuts. You don't have to go in and configure any activators. It's literally plug and play. So let's jump into vMix and take a look at how that works. So here's our replay scene going. Um, let's go ahead and jump up here into our settings and take a look at our shortcuts. Now you can see here, I don't have any shortcuts or any activators. So I wanna take our default configuration, which is this right out of the box. I'm gonna plug it in and I'm gonna apply a template, a shortcut template. So let's take a look at how that's done. Go right over here to templates, and you'll notice on the left, there is a X key, X key, XKE64, that's the guy right there, uh, template. And that's it. That's the one we want to apply, right? So all you do is hit apply down in the bottom right corner. It says it'll replace all our existing settings, that's fine and our activators carried over as well. I've noticed that in the new version of vMix 24, it seems to be pulling the activator files too. Like if I have them side by side, I don't know if that's a thing or not, or if I'm just getting really lucky and that's working out. So let's take a look at what's actually going on here. We've got basically MIDI shortcuts. Uh, you can see in this little dash, it's like a two and a zero here, a two and a zero. Same thing on the, uh, activator side, the notes are a two. What that means is that when I built the, the template originally and sent it over to the X keys guys, I use this with my full size X keys T-bar so that I can have two controllers working on one vMix machine. The reason that we have these numbers at the start of each note is it basically assigns a MIDI channel. So my T-bar is on MIDI channel one, and my S-keys controller is, or my replay controller is on MIDI channel two. And if you are nosy, channel three is my audio controller, which is a Behringer X-Touch. So uh, I didn't change that when I sent it over here and it got published like that. So the one thing you will have to change is you'll have to go into your MIDI settings uh, right here, and you'll just have to go to channel mapping and make sure that your replay controller is selected and make sure that it's on channel two. Click OK, and that's it. You're good to go. The controller is going to work natively right inside of vMix 
easy peasy. This is great if you're teaching students and you just need to get a system up and running quickly. It's a great way of doing it. With this configuration though, the controller is really working as a four in, one out unit. Um, this was originally how vMix 23 was, and that's how we set up the controller. So if you're gonna set it up this way, think of it as we're gonna bring four cameras in and we're gonna have one camera as an output. That's how this kind of lines up. Now with the introduction of vMix 24, we got a lot more flexibility because they broke apart the A and B channels inside of vMix Replay. This gives us the capability to now either have four in, two out independently, or eight in, and really one out is how I think of it. Uh, you could also have eight in and two out, but it's a lot to keep up with. So it's kind of how you wanna play your cards or how comfortable you feel your operator is with vMix Replay is to how you might wanna set it up. So first configuration is the default one that's built into vMix straight out of the box. Second configuration, let's go back to this controller here. This is what I would consider a more professional setup. You add the A and B buttons, which give you independent control of both A and B and allows you to link and unlink each replay uh, channel. This is great if you have a more experienced vMix replay operator that feels comfortable uh, working with two channels. So being able to play something out on one while searching on channel two or A or B. Uh, if someone's familiar with a three play, uh, this is a great kind of similar setup to the way that that works. So what I wanna do is I wanna run through the shortcuts as they exist in the standard version. So the version right out of the box, and then we'll go into just a few changes that we made with the update for vMix 24. Let me pull back up the shortcut settings. Easier to take a look at it on this screen here. So you can see here in the default layout, we have a record start and a record stop button that starts and stops the replay. Uh, now, quick caveat, that doesn't start and stop like making events. Uh, just like in a three player, any other replay machine, this starts the master record for vMix replay. So once you hit that start button, the, it's gonna be recording all your camera channels until you hit stop. Word of advice, start at your event. Don't stop it until like you're done done. Just let it run. Um, you can get into like specs of your machine later, but just start it, let it run, stop it at the end. You don't wanna start and stop in the middle because it'll mess up your time code and it makes it hard to find events. So keep that in mind. Start beginning, stop at the end. Next over here, we have our Bcam buttons, uh, one, two, three, and four. These select between four cameras on the B channel and then our A cameras, one, two, three, and four, they're the red ones. That selects our cameras, one, two, three, and four. On the A channel, we have a frame left, then this is a directional button to send the replay into reverse, a play pause button, then a forward directional button, a frame right button, a jump to now, or go to live, or go to now. I think we have settled on go to now. Um, a live toggle button, then you have your mark input, your mark output, your play all. These mark in and outs on events, so, these are a little bit different than the big mark in, mark out, and play buttons. These mark in and out buttons here are when you're in the live, it'll mark your in and out, but these will actually update uh, event endpoints. Uh, your mark five, 10, and 15 buttons, which are a quick way to mark an event. It's like if you hit the, the minus five button, it's gonna make an out point. When you hit the button, it's gonna go back five seconds and mark an endpoint, and so then you have a chunky little event. That's five seconds. Same thing for 10, same thing for 15. So wherever you mark the end, it's gonna go back. Um, it's good for basketball. A lot of people use that, like so shot goes in, you can mark it and then go five seconds back and then you basically have the shot pretty quick. Uh, some people can take those down to three seconds. 
Uh, the cool thing about an X keys and the way it works inside of vMix is you can go in here to any of these templates and adjust that. So you can make your five, three, uh, you can make your 10, five, you can change it to what, whatever numbers you like. Let's go back and take a look at our chart again here. Uh, this copy to one, two, three, and four, this will copy whatever event is selected and move it to that playlist. Then we have our event previous, next, and then move event up and down. Then our event cameras, one, two, three, and four. So if you haven't figured it out, this is kind of like our event section. This is where you don't have to touch the mouse. Uh, you don't have to touch the mouse to move events up and down in the playlist. And if you wanna to go to a previous or next event, like to select it, like to move your cursor up and down, that's what the previous and next event do. And then move up and down, we'll take that selected one and move it up and down the list. Event cameras also are turning on and off the cameras for an event that's in a playlist. So that's what that kind of section is geared towards. Then last but not least, you have your T-bar control. And then you have two kind of controls here. You have the middle wheel which will go frame by frame, and then the outer wheel, which will speed up your search forward and back uh, by however hard you turn the wheel. So let's go ahead and take a look at how the controller works in practice. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of full screen our vMix replay look here, and let's put the controller over here in the window so you can kind of see how this works. So currently we are sitting in a inactive replay event, right? We're, we're not live, um, we're not recording, so nothing's really going on. And we're gonna use this just as a demo so I can show you how each of these buttons work. So first off, let's take a look at our shuttle. So we're gonna look at the uh, wheel here, our jog and shuttle control. So what this does is the inner wheel goes frames the outer wheel goes a quick jog and forward back. So let's jump over into vMix and you'll see here, this is the inner wheel going frame forward, frame back. The outer wheel will start speeding forward and the faster I turn this to the right, the faster it goes, right? So same thing for back. The faster I go, the more I turn, the faster it gets. One of the cool things that I built into these templates and I built into all the templates that you'll see in this video is when the, the jog wheel goes back to center, it pauses the video and it sets the direction to forward. Um, this will burn you if you don't have two shortcuts on that center thing because what will happen is you'll be going backwards, then you'll go to hit play and it'll start playing backwards. So that's already built in there for you. So if you use the default template or if you alter it in any way, just remember that the center point of that wheel does have two shortcuts assigned to it and one is to set the direction back forward. All right, so let's take a look at the way that all of this is working inside of vMix. So our first button is our record stop, start and stop button. This is the new layout, which this uh, record and stop is now a toggle, but I can go ahead and hit this and it's gonna go ahead and send us into record. You saw that the record button over here lit up and we're in live, right? So now we're looking at live cameras. That's what this button does right here, this live button. If I'm hit go to now, that's always gonna take me to the furthest place in time. So if I was editing, I wasn't in live mode, so like the live is off, right? And I was editing here and you know, I was gonna make an input there, you know, whatever. Uh, and a big play happened, I could hit go to now and it's gonna take me immediately to right now in time. So live will take me into seeing the live cameras, but if you look down here, it's not taking me to, this This down here is a giant timeline. It, I'm, I'm not gonna go through all the features of vMix uh, replay, that's for another day. But if you see this timeline here is still growing, this, this marker here, which is my current place in time, is moving backwards. Even though I'm looking at live cameras, if I hit my live button and go out of live, I'm now right here in time. I'm at 12.08 in time, right? If I wanna go to the current time, I'd have to hit go to now, and that will take me to the current time, 12.09, right? So if I'm in live and something happens and I go 
out of live, it's taking me back to the place in time where I was. That's why I built this go to now button so that if you're ever live, a big play happens like that, right? There was a flag. We want to go back and look at it. I can hit out of live, go to now, and I'm right there, right? I'm right at where we where the play is. I'm ready to play it out immediately. So the director, whoever wants to call for it. Um, that's how these buttons work. I'm going to go ahead and stop our record just because I don't want to fill up my hard drive with a bunch of nonsense today. Um, the next we'll go over is our, our camera buttons. So if you see, uh, the blue buttons here are our B channel, which right here says B4 is currently selected, which B1, B2, B3, B4, right? So uh, we only have three cameras and I'm cheating and sending program back into camera four for this and they look the same, but that's how you select your cameras. Uh, the A side is the exact same way, A1, A2, three, four. And then our copy to playlist buttons, let's go ahead and select a event. So if you remember, there's two ways we can kind of do this. We can do it mouse and clicky style, or we can use our buttons. So let's take a look. Let's go back over here and look at our section. This is kind of our event section. That's what we're going to be working in. So I'm going to go to previous and next event, and you see that the orange bar kind of appeared there. So if I go next event, I go down to the event I've created. If I go previous event, I go to the one before it, right? So there's a giant list. That's how we move up and down. All right, so let's go ahead and look what happens if we hit the blue button and we copy an event to a playlist. So I'm gonna select, uh, let's select the first one and then I'm gonna hit four, Boop, four. I don't get a confirmation that it worked, but I can look over here in four and see that it's there. Now here, I'll take this one out to show you that there's none in there. And let's go back over. I'll use my buttons again to go to my next event and then I'll go four and boop, lo and behold, it's there. All right, so that's how this kind of section works. Uh, previous and next event. Um, let's say that we want to make a playlist and we've got these two plays, right? We've got like this throw and then we have, uh, looks like two looks on this play. Yeah, two looks on this play. Maybe we want to do this one first, right? We want to use this play first and then go into the two looks. I could actually use the move up and down buttons here. And if you see now, there's a kind of a take ID over here, 22 and nine. You can see those switching. That's because I'm moving 22 around. So I can move it up or down within the playlist. That's how these buttons work here. Now let's say for clip 22 there, we want to turn on camera one. That goes to the next set of buttons, these yellow buttons here. You can see if I hit one E, it's turning on the button that or the event camera that's selected. So that one's on and off. Uh, camera three on and off, camera four on and off, camera two, I can't turn camera two off because there has to be a camera on, there we go. So that's how um, the event buttons work. Let's go to uh, some transport controls now. So uh, these that look like they would push to the next event, they don't, I apologize. I do think that you probably want to have a push button like if you don't know what pushes, like you could be playing out a playlist and it may be a little fad, maybe too long, and you want to go to the next clip uh, and you want to have the ability to go to the next clip. I don't have a button for that. You kind of have to mouse click for that. Or you can take these buttons and remap them to push through your playlist. It's completely up to you, but out of the box, it doesn't work like that. So these guys right here, these go frame forward and frame back. I found these useful when I had a replay on the air. It was a little cleaner to do that than to use this. Got a little clunky and I'll show you what I mean. So let's look at uh, the play we've got going on right here. Um, yeah, so let's look at, at this uh, look right here on the B side, right? So if I use the wheel here and it works okay, right? And it works all right. And this is why I say that I think you could remap these frame left and frame right buttons to a push. But if you hit, 
the frame right and frame left, you can tap through it. And what's cool about this is if, you know, someone's foot's over the line, you could go forward and back pretty easy, right? You could find that frame pretty easy as to where, you know, a foul happened or interference occurred. So that's what these buttons do. They basically are doing the same thing this center wheel is doing, but it's a little more refined with, with the button push. Um, these next arrows will set the direction forward and back. So if we're playing out a clip, I'm going to go slow this down so it makes more sense. If we're playing it back and we want to go back and like, oh, let's take a look at that. We could easily hit our forward and back arrows here, and that's going to change direction, right? So that's how we, we kind of get into directions forward and back. Um, this button in the center here is a play pause button, so we can actually pause and go back. Play, go forward, pause, go forward, go back. So this acts as a toggle for play and pause. It's different than this guy down here. This guy actually just plays. It, it only plays. It's, it doesn't pause. Only this one will pause. So this is this is just a play, and it's just playing the timeline out. Let's get into our T-bar a little bit now. I just showed you kind of how it was controlling the speed, but basically up is 100 back this way, down is zero. So let's jump into there and take a look at that. So we have a, a play going on right here. I'm just gonna kind of go quickly through time, get us to a play that looks good. Uh, and we'll kind of manipulate time here. He hikes the ball, he's running up the middle, and he gets tackled, we go back to 100. And you can see down here at the bottom, uh, this little slider is gonna change in correspondence with the uh, actual T-bar, so you see it going down. And you can see when we kind of hit the markers, like the 25% mark, it's kind of a game if you can line it up just perfectly right. 50%, where's 50? Boom, nailed it. Uh, 75, oh, 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 there we go, and 100. So that's how the T-bar works. Super simple, super intuitive. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of replay, which is creating these events, right? So I'm going to go and start my record. I'm going to go into live. Live is lit up there on the screen. Now we just have to get to something that looks cool because these guys are doing absolutely nothing right now. Um, I'm using my A channel here to kind of look for shots. So like there's kind of a good look, right? Maybe I want to keep that for a rollout. Coach talking to the player. So I'm going to make an endpoint using my in button. And they're done talking. I'm going to make an out point. Okay. So using the in and out, I just created a new event. All right. I'm going to go out of live. And I'm going to pause this. I'm going to hit go to now. All right. Actually, let's not go to now because that's going to confuse you. Let's go, you know, back in time so that you aren't looking at what we're currently looking at. I'm going to use our previous and next buttons here to go through our timeline, right? So this is the clip that we just created right there, right? So if I want to play that out, I could simply hit play, play pause. And this starts playing the clip from its start. It's not playing, let me, let me see if I can explain this. It's not playing the clip itself. It's going to the start point you made of that clip and it's now playing out the timeline, the full timeline that you're recording. Uh, so if, if you were to, let's go back into here. So if I hit pause, right, and I go my previous and next event, I go back to where, you know, this guy was talking to the player and I hit play. That's just going to play from the start point of that clip. This clip is only has a duration of four seconds. We're way past that now, right? This is really good if you have uh, like this shot in particular where you just snagged a clip of it really quickly and they might want to take it. You could always run it back this way. It's a good way to kind of do that. But this that's how the play pause button works and that's how this play button works as well. So if I hit play here, it's just going to play the timeline out. And this button's just playing the timeline out and this button is just playing the timeline out. If I want to play the clip and just the clip only, then I have to use this event play button, okay? So let me go to here, right? 
Now, if you watch, when I press this event play all button, you're gonna see this clip go away. So ready? Boop. What's happening here is it's playing the entire playlist. So that's because the shortcut that's assigned to this is playing all of the clips that are in this playlist, not just the one we have selected. This confuses some people with the way this is laid out. And granted, I get it, I understand. One of the things in vMix is they have you select whether you wanna play all events or just play one event. They've just introduced some new tools that will allow you to kind of select different button functions within one button. You could add uh, that control to this so that it will just play the clip you have selected or you can use it as is play the clip that you have right and then just know that it's not going to hit the out point it's not the best way to play out a clip um, but you could always go in and assign any button uh, the way that I run replay in the way that it's been set up for our operators. It hasn't been a problem, but I do understand that it could be a concern if you're used to playing just back the clip in like a traditional way, like on the button here, I'll show you how that looks. So if we were to go and select, like if we're a traditional mouse click, you could go down here and you could play all, play selected, play each angle or play by ID, or you could hit this button, right? That will just play the last event. You could create a button on here, you know, that played the last event. You could change this one to play last event if you want to. That's the flexibility you have with the X keys. But as it comes with the default control, if you hit this button, it's going to play all the clips in the playlist. All right. I'm going to go ahead and, oh, just a quick look. Like if this is playing out, this is how you would have to push. You'd have to click through here to push to the next event. I don't have a button for that, but you could... Figure that one out on your own and add it to the layout wherever you see fit. Um, the next thing, let's talk about our event in and out. So let's say that this guy that's drinking water here, we wanted that clip to be you know, a little longer, right? We want it to maybe come in where a coach is uh, pulling off the ear, going to him, right? I can now hit event in. And if you watch right here this time, will change event in just change to 25 and yeah we want to take it all the way to his water and when coach comes back which makes the clip significantly longer we're going to take it before he starts painting out and then i go event out if you watch this out time here it'll change as well event out so that's what event in and out does it changes the in and out points of whatever event you have selected so if you ever need to go in and edit you can always up and down to the clip you want, move to a different place on the timeline using the jog and shuttle controller, and then create a new in or out point. Um, I can show you how the 5, and 10, and 15s work. So let's go back into live. Looks like that was a big play. Let's do, uh, let's make a new event at 10 seconds back. Boop. And you see, I'm going to get out of live here. You can see that we just created a new event. It has a duration of 9.99999. So let's go in there and load our new config. Go into our settings here. And this would be for the more advanced operator, um, the one that's gonna have A and B independent controls. So I'm just gonna remove all these shortcuts, yes. I'm gonna remove all these activators. Yes, yes. And now I'm gonna go in here and add my new template. So I'm gonna hit import, and lo and behold, I have two templates made. Now I have replay A and B, which works as uh, four in, two out. So uh, four cameras that run across both the A and B channels, and they have independent outputs. So you could uh, you know, show camera one on your A channel while you're fine in, you know, a camera two look on your B channel when that's ready, play it out on B. The other setup I have is eight in, one out. 
which basically turns the four, the two rows of four camera buttons into eight inputs, but it's still only one output. I don't have it where A and B are unlinked um, because you don't have access to all the cameras. Again, you could come up with a different solution to where you had access to all eight cameras on both A and B side, but there's not enough buttons currently on the controller as it's configured now to do that. So the way that I see it working best is four in, two out. Um, if you really need the other two cameras, uh, you could still run the four in, two out kind of template, uh, put the other two cameras on you know, a router, switch those in and out, um, that's a thing you can do with soccer if you're doing goal cams for home team. You know, if they're only going one way or the other way, just, you know, punch that one up for whatever half you're in. Uh, so there's options to kind of work around it. But we're going to take a look at that template. So we have here uh, replay AB. That's the shortcut that we're going to use. This replay 8 cam, you can find that in the forum as well in the X Keys Facebook user group. That is the eight camera config that I was talking about. Um, so we're gonna apply that guy. Yep, it's gonna erase all existing shortcuts. You see it's on channel two as well. And it pulls our activators because they were right beside it. I don't know if I'm getting lucky with that. I, is that a thing? You guys will have to let me know in the comments if your version 24 is pulling those like that. It's super cool that it's doing that. I, I'm not gonna complain. Um, I'm just going to go in here and make sure that my devices are enabled. It likes to default to my stream deck sometimes there. So, all right, we're all good to go now. Let's jump back in here and take a look. I'm going to pull up the controller. So now we're going to take a look at how the A and B buttons work up here in this A slash B button. These are the new additions, right? As well as the record toggle. You can go ahead and see that record starts when I hit it and record stops when I hit this, so awesome. Thank you, uh, VMix fillers, for the uh, start and stop toggle, that was huge. Um, if you look, we have A and B here. This corresponds to this section right here. So you see you have uh, A, B, A, and B. Currently, when A, B is lit up green like that, that means they're locked together. That's what this button represents right here. So let me punch in here so you can see. So that guy right there, that's our AB locked together. These are going to select the channel that you want to do. So if you want to just work in A, you hit A. If you want to just work in B, you hit B. If you want to gang them together, you hit A, B. I'll show you that in practice. If I hit A, you see now that A is lit up here. And whatever I do is only being affected in the A channel. This is the A output right here on the left. If I hit B, now B is highlighted red and everything I do is only affecting B. Now I'm going to get these totally jacked up. You see that time code is 1254 there, 1157 there. Now I'm going to hit the AB button to gang them. Boop. And now we have everything back linked to our A time code. So the B channel is now linked to where our A was. So again, A, B. A, B. So let's take a look at the other cool thing with this template of how we now can select our cameras independently uh, inside of vMix Replay using this template. So if I go in here and I lock our cameras together, we've got uh, all of our cameras. Let's get back here to some action. I'm just going to cruise on back here. Do, 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 do. Looks like the handheld guys calling it a day there. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, this is a good play. Okay, so let's use this as an example, right? So I have um, camera one in A. I'm going to just work in A, right? So I have camera one in A, and we're going to let this play out. So it's playing out. Now I'm going to hit B, go over to B. And now I can select a different look in B. So let's take this look, right? And now he's ready to go. I can go ahead and roll B. And whenever the director wants to, he can cross over to my B channel. When he crosses over to my B channel, I can hit A. And I can start working on A while B's there. 
I mean, it's uh, so you have two completely independent channels. So there's a throw on B, slowing that down. I can now hop back over to my B side. I can go ahead and run onto the next play, hit play. I, I'm, I'm doing independent speed. So let me go back into A, speed this guy up. He's now running full speed. I can frame back and forth. I mean, I can jog and shuttle. I mean, it's completely independent. I mean, everything is independent being controlled by the X keys controller. So that's it. Um, the operation of vMix and how you kind of set up uh, your workflow, completely up to you. But just know that having the addition of an X keys replay controller makes things so much quicker and efficient. Are there some quirks to it? Yes. Is everyone's specific replay task the same? Absolutely not. Uh, you can always add one of these little guys. This is a guy I like to keep in my backpack, right? And create as many little replay macros as you want and throw that in there in conjunction with your controller. So there's a lot of different options that you can do with X keys and they've been great. This is the, this is the prototype version that I, I made um, back in the day. And what year is it? 18, 2018, I made this guy. This is a hacked in half T-bar and it's still running to this day. I haven't had a lick of issues with it. Um, they're rock solid, they're great controllers and it's an awesome addition to any vMix setup. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I know this was a super long video, but hopefully it explains a little bit of how the controller works, how the different templates are there. Go check out the X keys user group on Facebook. Uh, that's where the template files live that are not native within vMix. Um, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Like and subscribe as all the cool YouTuber kids say, which I am not, and I will do my best to try and answer your questions, but I have a full-time gig, which is in this space. Now I have to clean up all this junk. Till next time.